It's Thursday, January 27, 2022. This Day Weather Podcast being brought to you by Chugwater Chili, the gourmet spice of Western life. Well, we've got some really good chili weather coming here today with another Arctic front and an Alberta clipper. So check out the Chugwater Chili seasoning. You're going to want to make a pot of it up today. Get the original or hot seasoning. It's award-winning. It's great for chili, tacos, and more. You know, the Chugwater Chili seasoning can be not just to make chili, but add to other things as well. And if you go to chugwaterchili.com, use Chugwater Don and get 20% off your next order. Well, an Alberta clipper today, the second one of this week and about the fourth or fifth clipper we've had over the last two weeks, but high pressure moves in on Friday. So there is gonna be a little bit of snow today, especially in the front range of Colorado, southeastern Wyoming, parts of the Nebraska Panhandle. The system isn't as moist or as strong as the last clipper. But uh, the I-25 corridor in Colorado in particular, going to get a little bit slick today through early tonight. And it's going to be pretty cold out there. We call it an Alberta clipper for a good reason. The air's coming out of Alberta, so it's going to be pretty cold. Now, Friday through Monday looks good. High pressure moves in. Will it be perfect? No. We'll have a little wind Friday. It'll be a little breezy this weekend. But Friday through Monday will be dry, plenty of sun, and rebounding temperatures. Now, the next storm system to arrive is going to be Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. That is going to be a combination of Pacific air and Arctic air. And that could bring a chance of snow and colder air moving in right as we get into February 1st. And the Arctic air that could move in next week needs to be watched. We still have some question marks. I'm not 100% sold yet on a large North American Arctic outbreak, but confidence is growing. And this is really a heads up to livestock interest. We have a real potential for the middle to the end of next week to see sub-zero temperatures in many parts of the northern and central Rockies and the central and northern high plains. We still need to get a couple more days under our belt, get a few more looks at some longer term modeling data and kind of see where we're at. But it really does look very similar to what happened a year ago in some areas. Here's this morning's satellite photo. This looks very similar to what happened just a couple of days ago. This little patch of cloudiness is the Alberta Clipper, which has come in right like this over the last 48 hours. So you can see Southern Wyoming, parts of Colorado, Western Nebraska and Kansas will be the areas that get the snow showers and flurries today along this area right here. Some of that getting eventually down into Northeast New Mexico and the Panhandles by later today and tonight. The latest snow and ice cover map shows a pretty expansive area of blue getting into the lower 48 states. You can see that just about all of Canada and the waters up north all frozen. This is likely going to expand a little bit more south and east as we head into the next couple of days. These are temperatures relative to the 30 year averages for January so far. I wanted to show you this. Anywhere you see blue, January for the month so far has been colder than average. White means near average and the light yellow colors mean slightly above average. If you were to look at where this whole map is, which would be the lower 48 states in Southern Canada, the deviation from, from normal is 0 0.035 Celsius from the 30 year average. So it's about average for that area, but you can see the core of the cold so far this month has been right here in the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains states back up into Northwest areas of Canada. And we'll probably see this blue expand a couple more areas to the south before the month is over. As we take a look at the current pattern, we have this high pressure ridge right along the west coast, and here's our Alberta clipper swinging through northwest Colorado today. This little clipper, believe it or not, is going to help instigate the east coast storm, which is already making news. But what we will see this weekend is the Arctic air retreating a bit more towards those areas. This high pressure and more mild air slips into the Rockies this weekend. But this is what it looks like with the clipper today through tomorrow morning. This looks very similar to many other maps I've shown you over the last couple of weeks. The mountains get a little snow. We get a little snow on the plains. It gets colder, but nobody gets clobbered west of the divide into the Great Basin and the western slope areas just get little or nothing out of this type of pattern as the systems are all coming this way, not coming off the west coast. This is what the snowfall forecast looks like through the next 24 hours. As we go into the weekend, there's the warmer high pressure moving on in. This little upper low in California is not going to do much other than make it a little unsettled in central and southern California. This blue area right here is the low that is our current Alberta clipper. 
It's going to come in, interface with Arctic air. And I tell you, when Arctic air gets along the coast like this, this is where you get these explosive, rapidly developing low pressure systems. Up here, this is the next wave that's going to be our troublemaker as we head into next week. But overall, the Friday through Monday time frame in the central and northern Rockies and the central and northern high plains will be pretty benign weather-wise. Now, speaking of that East Coast storm, these can be extremely tricky. I just want to give you a little bit of inside baseball on how difficult these coastal systems can be to forecast. And I'm glad I don't have to make this forecast because you have really big differences in the models. And some models say big storm, some models say no storm at all. So this is a good example of, uh, this is called the North American model, or we call it the NAM. It's a short range model that goes out to three and a half days. And you can see it's showing some very impressive snow totals in Boston, getting into New Jersey, New York, all the way down into near the DC area and up into New England. If you look at the European model, somewhat similar, but the heavier snow is further up north. And then if you look at the American model, the GFS model, well, it really doesn't call for a storm at all. Maybe out here in the far eastern Massachusetts, maybe out into eastern areas of Long Island, but essentially missing the major metro areas. So you have models that miss the metro areas, models that clobber it. So stay tuned. Now I wanna get into the long range forecast for you because it, this is gonna be important when we take a look at the long term trends we have been hinting that February is going to start off colder. We're very confident of that. These are temperatures relative to the 30-year normals and averages by next Wednesday afternoon. Look at this extensive area of cold that extends from the north slope of Alaska into the western Great Lakes all the way up to Greenland. Now, this is cold. Look at the purple. That purple means 30 degrees or more deviation from 30 year averages. The green is pretty darn cold as well. So it gets west of the divide, the cold does, and it penetrates deep into the Southern Plains and getting to the Gulf Coast by later in the week. Look at these deviations. Now this is by next Wednesday. The following Wednesday, look at the depth and the expanse of the purple and the cold across the Northern and Central Rockies and the Northern Plains. And then if you go out even further, this is a week from this Friday. This is Friday the 11th of February. And you can see more purple. So you're talking about an extended period where this could really set up shop. Now, I want to put a big question mark on here. As I told you at the beginning of the podcast, not 100% sure yet of the intensity and the scope of this Arctic outbreak. We need a couple more days to get a better handle on it. But I want to get the word out to livestock interest in this region. You probably want to start preparing just in case for an extended period of some very cold weather starting Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, probably going through next weekend and probably going through the following week. We'll get more detail, deal, detail for you tomorrow and certainly on Monday, but I would start maybe thinking about what could be coming with this February cold. Have yourself a good Thursday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.